I study the universe um, and uh, in particular uh, the search for life, black holes, uh, how did the universe start and how it will end. Aha, uh -huh. and are we alone? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, my sense is that we're not special in any way. Uh, primitive life must be very ubiquitous because it started on Earth as soon as the Earth cooled uh, to roughly uh, room temperature. And uh, therefore, uh, there are many planets out there. We found that about a quarter of all the stars have habitable planets similar to the Earth. Is the question, are we alone, an important question? It's the most important question in science, in my view, because it will change our view of reality in all possible ways. Uh, it, will, it could change the religious beliefs of some people. It could change... Um, it's the ultimate interdisciplinary field because it could affect uh, politics, it could affect uh, the way we conceive of us uh, in the universe, um, our place in the universe, uh, it could affect, it, it could lead to uh, developments of um, interdisciplinary fields that currently do not exist. For example, astro-linguistics. You could think about trying to figure out how to communicate with other civilizations. It um, would affect um, uh, economics because you would think immediately about the uh, possible implications for collaboration with other civilizations. Um, by the way, if we find another civilization, we, we should think about what questions to ask because it could be a shortcut that will save us a lot of time. Uh, it would feel like cheating in an exam where you ask another civilization what is the dark matter, what is the dark energy, because we are supposed to figure it out through observations. But they, they, they may have had the billions of years to do it before us. Um, I actually think the most interesting question is not only whether there is life around us in the Milky Way galaxy, but also when did life start in the universe? How early? Um, did it start with the first stars or the second generation of stars, about uh, 50 million years after the Big Bang? Or much later, let's say a billion years after the Big Bang? Uh, and then how long will it survive? Clearly the Sun will die within 7 billion years. Um, so stars like the Sun are not good places to support life in the long term. However, dwarf stars that, that weigh roughly a tenth of the mass of the Sun uh, can last for about 10 trillion years, a thousand times longer than the Sun. So in the very distant future, dwarf stars, uh, which happen to be the most common type of stars in the galaxy, uh, will potentially support life um, up to 10 trillion years from now, a thousand times longer than the present age of the universe. And actually the nearest star to us is Proxima Centauri, 12% of the mass of the Sun. It's one of these stars that will last very long. And I, I very often advise uh, wealthy friends to buy real estate uh, on, on the habitable planet that was found next to Proxima Centauri. Uh, because in the long term, the value of this real estate will only go up uh, when our civilization would like to move away from... Who do they the buy it from? <laughs> who, who do they pay? Why, why do you have to... Astronomers. <laughs> you. Some people are looking for biological life on the surfaces of planets, and other people think, you know what, biological life only lasts a little bit, and what happens is you get advanced life and then they are no longer biological, therefore they don't need to be on the surface of a planet, so we should be looking for these life forms, advanced life forms everywhere, not just on surfaces of planets. That, uh, that is true. The question is where to look, uh, and it's not an easy question. Um, so, for example, another paper that I wrote was uh, searching for artificial lights. And the idea there was if there is um, an object that produces its own light, then it gets dimmer as it moves away from you, like one over the distance squared. But if the object receives its light, let's say, from the sun that illuminates it, mm -hmm. uh, then the uh, radiation that it uh, reflects mm -hmm. uh, gets dimmer as it moves away. So you have less uh, radiation so one coming from four. the source. Mm -hmm. So it falls off as actually one over distance to the fourth mm -hmm. uh, in that case. And what one can do is, in principle, search for objects that move uh, within the solar system and see if they uh, 
produce their own light or not. Right. And uh, it turns out that a city like Tokyo, we did the calculation, can in principle be observed throughout the solar system um, with existing telescopes. Do we live in a simulation? I don't think so. As far as I know, I, I kissed my, my wife this morning and uh, it's very real to me. It's very real to you. So <laughs> even if she was simulated, if it's real to you, that's good enough, huh? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, are we alone? Uh, no, I think we are not alone. And why? Because I don't think we are special. <laughs>